I can say with confidence that the feeling of wonder that Outer Wilds left me with is unlike anything else I've ever played, and I'm equally confident that the only viewers who think that statement was hyperbole are those who've yet to play it themselves. I will avoid discussing or showing any of Outer Wilds' juiciest moments and most shocking revelations, so anyone on the fence about lifting off can rest assured that this video comes in peace. On the surface, this 2019 adventure is about space exploration, but it's also a game about leaving home, and a game about friendship. Part of what makes Outer Wilds such a strong title is that there are so many solid ideas in here. Ideas so strong that, on their own, they could have made up their own competent indie titles, but here just represent pieces of the greater whole. I've narrowed down what made my experience special into three core concepts, three pillars that are holding up this title and making it what it is, so we might as well get started with the first. Physics. If you want to be extremely reductive, you wouldn't be super off-base if you called Outer Wilds a walking simulator. Despite all of its trappings, it's a combatless first-person exploration game. But any hesitations you may have about that genre are ones that Outer Wilds addresses in an interesting way, the same way that Kojima tackled the concept of the walking simulator in Death Stranding, by focusing on the very mechanics of walking. Getting from place to place isn't as simple as moving forward in Outer Wilds, and that's almost entirely due to this game's exaggerated but realistic recreation of Newtonian physics. How you jump here is a good demonstration of this. A complete jump is composed of two parts. Holding A puts you in a crouching state, and releasing will send you up into the air relative to how long you've held. It's a small showcase of Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Getting airborne requires you to push off the ground, and for the ground to push off of you. Once you get used to it, all it really means in the context of jumping is that you need to prep it a half second earlier than you would in most other games, but take those same physical principles and roll them out to the Outer Wilds miniature solar system and the depth starts to make itself known. All of the planets in the system have a gravitational pull, some stronger than others. Coming into orbit too fast may end in a crash landing. Instead of pumping the brakes as I neared, I built a habit of angling myself and using the gravity of the planet to slingshot around it. It worked with varying levels of success. Working up to a level of competence in the game's flying system takes time, and demands you to uncover its intricacies. Your ship comes with an autopilot that's weak by design. It sends you in a straight line towards your destination planet, but doesn't account for the gravity or obstruction of celestial bodies on the way. For a large majority of this game's airtime, you are in direct control of your ship and improving your mastery over flight. Land-based movement has skill too, as exiting your craft allows you to make use of a jetpack to hop around the game's planets. With low enough gravity, you can use the jetpack to ride in the planet's orbit indefinitely as a satellite to get around. Other times the gravity is so punishing that you need to use fuel to make the smallest of hops. The physics engine also creates additional considerations and dangers elsewhere during your adventuring. The whirlpools of giant's deep send islands soaring into the atmosphere and crashing down back into the seas moments later. Planets close to the sun can be especially tricky. The big orange king at the center of the galaxy exudes its influence on everything else, and getting too close to it will only end in a reminder of just how at its mercy you are. All of this skill-based movement and danger created by gravitational poles is only possible because of the game's physics system. It's a system that impacts every moment of play, rather than just being something on the surface. Outer Wilds' second gameplay pillar is also one that is related to a fiery death at the hands of the sun. 22 minutes. 22 minutes is the duration of Outer Wilds' Majora's Mask-style gameplay loop. You start off every run walking up to a campfire on your home planet of Timber Hearth. Go up the elevator, climb into your dinky spacecraft, then choose where your next 22 minutes are going to take you. These 22 minutes are the system's final 22 minutes. At the end, the sun goes supernova and wipes out the solar system, only for you to wake up at the exact same campfire moments later. And so truly begins your quest, in hopes of answering ever-burning questions you may have, like why the loop is happening and if there's a way to break it. The answers you seek are in the text of a long extinct race known as the Nomai. The player character is among a group of spacefaring adventurers representing the Outer Wilds Company. And though he is the last to leave the comfortable forests of Timber Hearth, he's the very first to bring along with him a Nomai translation device. 
Your reward for solving a puzzle or finding a secret location is almost exclusively the curved ancient text of this precursor civilization, reading which will give you more insight into the lives of the Nomai and all the secrets of the world they uncovered. The history of this universe and the writing found within its scrolls don't exist at the periphery here, they're front and center. The Outer Wilds treats its lore as a reward. There aren't any suit or ship upgrades, no extra equipment or items. Everything that you gain for your travels is lore and knowledge about how the universe works. My final playthrough where I got the credits to roll consisted of nothing that I couldn't have done on my very first playthrough. By necessity, the game can be beaten within 22 minutes if you know what you're doing. That's one of the coolest aspects of its gameplay loop. It has the puzzle solving and exploration of a metroidvania, but it supplements the acquisition of new abilities with the acquisition of new knowledge. Some of this knowledge is so powerful that it feels like gaining a new ability, even if it's something you technically could have done within moments of the game opening up. The game's concept of quantum imaging comes to mind, but sharing what that is would spoil some of the fun. The 22 minute loop also keeps the game's pacing really tight. When I first jumped into the game, I was surprised about just how small this solar system was. Outer Wilds chooses to keep its playable area authored and dense. It's not a limitless galaxy, it's a baby-sized set of planets that can all be accessed within minutes of the game opening up. Once again, it needed to be small to account for the game's hard 22 minute stop. Never being more than a few minutes away to any given objective helps encourage exploration. You're not going to die and lose any equipment or be sent back light years away. Go anywhere and do anything, because the worst case scenario is that you've lost a few minutes, but hopefully gained some knowledge in return, even if that knowledge was just finding out one more thing to stay away from. That leads into the third and final pillar of what comprises Outer Wilds, the adventure. Take away the revolutionary recreation of physics and the time loop that holds the flow of the game, you're still left with a space adventure with plenty to love. Outer Wilds' focus on non-linear exploration with writing-based rewards works because both the journey and the destination are so good. The precursor race of the Nomai have a complete story given to you via the text they've left behind, all of which get organized into your ship's logs upon completion. This log is instrumental to the game's loop, as it replaces any normal quest or objective system. You're never told where to go or what to do in the Outer Wilds. Lift off and go wherever. The more artifacts and writings you find, the more your ship log fills up. The more you fill up your ship log, the more you realize that the events on these separate planets may not be so separate after all. Your logs will visualize into an ever-expanding web of knowledge, with locations on one planet having some relation or reference to something on the other side of the solar system. Find those related rumors, investigate them to their source, and uncover long ancient secrets. That is the primary motivator for continuing to play your sheer curiosity. With no quest markers and no formal objectives, the Outer Wilds is still able to give you both the desire and the means to progress further. The moment of Eureka achieved when you finally put two and two together and solve a puzzle that's left you scratching your head for multiple runs is incredible. Even times where I hit a roadblock and got frustrated with a puzzle I couldn't solve, the non-linearity of the game saves the day and allows me to just fly somewhere else. This prevented me from getting outright stuck on multiple occasions, and had the dual benefit of letting me clear my head to try again later, and give me the opportunity of potentially finding a related clue on a far off planet. In my 20 hours of play, there was only a single time where I was outright stuck and needed to go to the internet for assistance. I had all the clues I needed related to the puzzle, but still couldn't figure out exactly what I needed to do only to look up the solution and realize that the execution required for progressing was 10 times more specific than anything else found in the game. This represented a single major frustration in my time that's a small oddity on an otherwise brilliant experience, but I think its existence only calls attention to how otherwise strong the puzzle design is. It's an exception to the rule, a rule which has puzzles of near perfect difficulty, forcing you to stew on them until you finally get that aha moment. Juggling non-linear exploration with cross-planet puzzle solving and no prompts or quest log couldn't have been an easy thing for the developers to do, but they did it, and the end result is that playing the Outer Wilds will make you feel like a genius. An incredibly robust physics system, a well-executed time loop, and a non-linear adventure strong enough to stand on its own are the core of what makes Outer Wilds a game I could not stop grinning at while playing. It's a game that demands you play an active role. 
Progressing requires looking for subtle context clues in the environment and reading up every bit of lore. It forces thinking abstractly and engaging with its physics systems. The amount of stuff going on here is frankly intense, and that intensity isn't going to be for everyone. For me, I'm just upset I'm not stuck in a time loop that would allow me to go back and experience this game all over again.